Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and today we're at the Venetian Waterways on Great Yarmouth Seafront. Now believe it or not, I've spent the last couple of hours walking around filming and there are so many species here and I've managed to catch some of them on camera. Let's take a look at what I found. The Venetian Waterways were built in 1926 as a way of providing jobs and creating a new tourist attraction for Great Yarmouth. They consist of winding concrete canals, islands, bridges and ornamental gardens. The waterways have become a bit run down over the years but they've recently been refurbished and are now back to their former glory. I'm not sure when they were introduced but there are lots of goldfish in the canals and this ready source of food has attracted some skilled fishermen. Cormorants are a specialist fish eater. They have powerful web feet at the backs of their bodies and can dive under the water for several minutes at a time. They have large hooked beaks that are perfectly suited to gripping hold of any fish that they chase down under the surface. I've never seen these birds at the waterways before, but as I looked around, I noticed it wasn't just the one and there seemed to be a group of five or six in the area. Although their oily feathers are quite water resistant, after several dives, cormorants often stand with their wings outstretched to dry them off. Because it was cloudy on the day that I visited, the sun wouldn't be warm enough alone, so the birds slowly flapped their wings to dry off faster. In their natural habitat, Cormorants perch amongst the branches of trees, but this one seems to have found a man-made alternative. Another bird nearby had made the natural choice, but in the strong coastal breeze it didn't look like it was finding it too easy to balance. Lots of the islands at the waterways have bridges to them and are open to the public, but at the northern end there are several large islands that aren't accessible. This provides the perfect place for another fish eating specialist to rest up in safety. This grey heron is a bit of a local celebrity and I knew he was there before I got anywhere near as I overheard excited families talking about what they'd seen. I think this heron actually has a name, Alan but it is a sad story how he came to fame. In 2016 he was shot twice with an air gun and had to spend several weeks in a wildlife rehabilitation centre. Luckily, after extensive physiotherapy he was successfully re-released back to his territory. Herons have a hard life in the wild and although they are a predator, they are also prey. More than two thirds of them do not survive their first year but those that get on well have a life expectancy of around five to six years. This being said, the oldest grey heron on record was a captive bird that lived for more than 23 years. Now aside from the species of birds that eat the fish that are in the waterways, there are birds that are here just because the people feed them. Let's have a closer look at some of them. Lots of people visit the waterways to feed the birds, in particular the ducks. Although they can look quite different from one another, these are all mallards. Because this is the species that people keep for food, eggs and feathers, they have been selectively bred over many generations to be various colours and sizes. Some of these domestic birds have escaped and bred with their wild counterparts. This means that wild birds often crop up in various shapes and sizes. These are wild coloured males. They have green heads, grey and brown bodies and bright orange feet. They also have a striking blue, almost pearlescent patch on each wing. This is called a speculum and is found on a few other species of duck as well. Although people come to the waterways to feed the ducks, 
There are other birds that take advantage of this free buffet. Gulls. This is a young heron gull who would have hatched out earlier this year. You can tell this because of his grey colouring. As they get older, they lose these feathers and have a white body with slate grey wings. This can take up to four years. In Great Yarmouth, gulls are a bit of a controversial subject. The parents can be defensive of their nests and have been known to dive at people and try to attack or poo on them. Naturally they would have nested on cliff tops, but buildings make the perfect alternative and with the ready supply of food it is no surprise that they have moved into our towns and cities. Although gulls are often called seagulls, that is a bit misleading. This bird here is a black headed gull and they can be seen away from the coast as much as they are along it. They sometimes live far inland and can often be seen following tractors as they plough fields, waiting for them to expose worms and other bugs for them to eat. You might be looking at this bird and asking why it's called a black headed gull when it doesn't have a black head. These birds molt their head feathers twice a year and for the autumn, winter and spring they have white heads with faint darker markings. In the breeding season however, they have pitch black head feathers and look quite different from how they do here. Great Yarmouth is where I grew up and I'm so happy that now the waterways have been refurbished there is another place so close to the town centre that is great for not only people but for wildlife too. Okay, so that's all we've got time for today, guys. If you have enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and maybe pop across and check out some of the other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.